Hey, good morning, Walking Truth Warriors. This is Dr. James Sutton. I uh, want to talk to you this morning about bishops here and everywhere and about the talent tools of God. It's interesting that uh, after I'm on vacation, this is my, my daughter's dog trying to jump on me. But as we read in Acts, if you go to Acts chapter 14, verse 15, you'll see um, a story about where Paul and uh, Barnabas have just done a miracle. <coughs> Excuse me. And they are, uh, the people who watched them do the miracle began to worship them as Zeus and Hermes. And then Paul tells them that, look, I'm just, we're just like men of like affections or like natures like you and begin to tear their clothes and tell the men to get up and stop worshiping them. And as, as, as preachers and pastors and teachers and bishops, I mean, this thing with bishops being everywhere, I mean, bishop here, bishop there, bishop everywhere, and all these ordaining organizations, people have to wake up and see that this is just a bunch of foolishness. Most men start these organizations and women start these organizations because they're disgruntled about something that happened to them in the organization that they came from. So they start their own ministries. And I'm not questioning the legitimacy of it, but if all of these people in the United States were doing the work of God, the United States wouldn't be in the mess that it's in. But bishop here, bishop there, where everybody's getting ordained a bishop. And I gave you guys a secret to that. It's a, it's a move by men to puff themselves up. You know, God gave the, the fourfold ministry, the fivefold ministry, however you interpret that, we get to that later. But he gave you that ministry for one reason, for edifying other saints. He didn't give you that ministry. That wasn't given to the church. That was a tool given to God, by God to the church. That was not something that men and women should, should, should relish in and, and, and pump themselves up and, and under their own egos. I mean, those... Uh, ministries, those gifts to the church are servant gifts, not idle gifts. And it's good to respect your pastor and your teachers, but to idolize them and put them on a pedestal is ridiculous because they're the tools. I'll give an example. The bat that Hank Aaron swung to hit all those uh, home runs, the bat that he swung to hit those home runs, is that the tool or is that the talent? That's the talent. That's the tool. That's not the talent. God gave him a talent to hit home runs and he uses a bat. Okay. So there's no, there's no, uh, 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 idolizing the bat. You and I could pick up that same bat and we wouldn't be able to hit as many home runs because we're not the source of the talent that, that, that moves that bat along that plane to hit those home runs. Well, the same thing with your, your fivefold ministry. That is, that is not the source. That's the resource. That's not the source. That's the resource. That's, that's God using the ministry to further the kingdom. That's not meant to, that is not meant to be put on a pedestal. And any pastor who, puts him to, who allows his church to put him on a pedestal is, is actually doing itself a, a, a disservice and the congregation a disservice. Same thing with the congregation. Don't do that to your pastor. Because, again, let's go back to Paul. He understood we are like-minded, like-natured men. So these men and women who are allowing themselves to be put on a pedestal, you have to remember, you got it's two parties blamed for that. They are just the tool. They are not the talent. God gave you them. And you thank God for that. But don't put the tool and start worshiping the tool more than you worship the God of the tool. The pastor is supposed to be your guide, not your God. The pastor is supposed to be a gift, not the giver of the gift. God is the giver of the gift. And we need to get back to that. We need to get back to the simplicity of that because it's, it's, we're, we're elevating our pastors and our teachers and our bishops. You know, I just heard something about a guy being called your grace. It's just ridiculous. But we're in a time where for some reason or another, <clears throat> instead of serving the people, we believe that, 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 that preaching in itself is the service when really going out here and shepherding people, caring for their needs, practicing James 1 27 is what the church should be doing. But the church is doing everything but that. We're raising the gifts above God. We're raising the men and women of God above God using them. Yes, you're supposed to thank God for a gifted 
teacher and a pastor and a teacher and apostle and all those names. You're supposed to thank God for that. But they are not the end. They are the tool. And you guys who are, are gifted in that area, remember that you're, you're the tool that God uses. And you should humble yourself before God. That God would even use you. Because you're not a perfect tool. You're a broken tool at that. If you are axe, you need to be sharpened. If you're a knife, you need to be sharpened. If you're a hammer, you need to be made sure that you're on on the on the uh that you're right. But God is using you as a tool. He's not using you for you to puff yourself up. Even Paul knew this, that with his revelation, and remember this, when God gives you a revelation, if you don't get yourself checked, that will lead to arrogance. Even Paul knew that he could be puffed up, but he asked that God would remove this thorn in the flesh from him three times because he he under he wanted to remove, but God knew who Paul was. Don't pump your pastors up like that. Don't do that to them. They are like-minded men. They love attention, just like most people do. They would love to be told that they're great. They love to be respected, and you should do all of that. But they are just like you, given an assignment, being used as a tool for God. Bless them, respect them, but don't elevate them to God's status. Remember, they're only as good as the way they point to God. Paul spent more time pointing to God. Peter was pointing to God. They never appoint, pointed to themselves. And that's how you know if you're under a good teacher or not. Is that teacher, is that preacher, is that pastor, is that sermon pointing you to Jesus or is it pointing you to your flesh? You have to make up your mind and really understand what's really going on. Because it doesn't make sense. You magnify the tool, but don't magnify the God of the tool. You magnify the talent, but don't magnify the God of the talent. Magnify the God this Easter, which is pagan within itself, but we can get in that later too. But we have to understand that we are out of control. Things are out of control in the church. And it's a good thing because that means that God is coming back. Jesus is coming back soon. But we are kind of out of control. Uh, it, it, it's amazing to me. Of what people will follow. This whole thing with Brian Karn is 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 ludicrous. I mean, to even debate that thing, it doesn't make sense. You know, and I mean debate it on the fact that we saw the evidence is there and it's actually debatable. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. People follow anything. Uh Google, uh, go on to YouTube and type in banana bread preaching and listen to that. Uh, that skit and it's in a movie called The Last Exorcism but we're at the time where people will believe banana bread preaching the man basically got up and said that he could preach about banana bread and then he'd get an amen out of him that comes from being biblical illiterate we are so biblical illiterate it, 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 it is mind boggling things that we should do we don't do Things that are prescribed in the Bible, we just toss them away. But things that are description, we want to do them as a form of religion out of them. Uh, Pentecost was never meant to be made a religion. But we did. And most people don't even know what Pentecost is. You know, most people don't even know half about the Bible that they should. It's because, they, again, they want to follow the talent, they want to follow the, the preacher, but you're not going to get to say in your last day that I was following a, a, a false prophet or a false teacher. You're going to be held accountable for your own. And they're going to be held accountable if they led you in the wrong way, in any other way other than Jesus. But we have to get back to what we know to be true in the word of God. We have to get back to that. Yeah. Follow, the, follow God, not the talent. Follow God, not the tool. Follow God and do what God say. Remember, your pastors, your apostles, your bishops, and all these other people with all these titles, they are like-minded people like you. Instead of worried about the title, what about the tile? Doing the work. Doing the work and getting people saved. Preach them in the salvation, and I'm sure God will take care of the rest. But you have to, you have to give them the good word of God to get them saved. We're coming into conference season. And a lot of people spend a lot of money going to different conferences and they're going to be dealing with the uh, different topics, the different situations, you know, breakthroughs and all that stuff. But the biggest breakthrough you need is a breakthrough from sin. 
And once you get a breakthrough from your sin, everything else will fall into place. I guarantee it. But they're not going to talk about that. They're going to give you the Band-Aid approach. And see, if they give you the Band-Aid approach, what's going to happen is you're going to think you've been delivered. But what actually you're doing is you're dealing with the fruit of the issue, not the root of the issue. The Bible tells us to lay the ax to the root and the root is sin. If you can get that, I've just saved you probably hundreds of dollars. And I like it when they say you're going to leave different than you when you came in. You are. Your bank account's going to be drained. By the time you get back home and that first statement comes and you didn't spend all your credit card money, it's going to hit you then. They got you. So have a good Resurrection Sunday. I pray that everything is well. And again, look at your church. Look at your pastor. Look at the people that you follow. Are they building monuments of men or has the church become a, a, a mortuarium for God, a mausoleum for God? Is it a monument to a man or, and, it, and it has become a mausoleum for God? You have to decide. Is your church going out doing things and saving people or has it become one tightly close knit group like a social club? And it's very exclusive. Only they want the kind of people who think like them on the inside. They want anybody different. Enjoy your Sunday, but read Acts 14. See if you are saying and your pastor saying we are like minded men and women with the same kind of affections. We don't deserve to be worshipped. So this is Dr. James Sutton. I'll check you out. Peace.